What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of my um, hip hop review. This is your boy Red Shield. The album I review today is Just Ice's third studio album, um, The Desolate One, which was released in 1989 on um, Fresh Records and shit like that. Yeah, excuse me. And so, continuing <clears throat> off Cool and Deadly, this was. This was um, fully produced by um, KRS One, of course, and shit like that. And the only single I know this album came out with was Welfare Recipients and shit like that. So, yeah. So I reviewed the um, Cool and Deadly album from '87 and shit like that, which I, I fucking like the album and shit. Um, very influential because it was combining hip hop, reggae, you know, just ice on the mic too, you know. So after the release of Cool and Deadly, you know, he with him and KRS One continued their relationship and shit like that. He appeared on the Stop the Violence movement, um, self destruction, which I'm gonna talk more about that when I review the um. Ghetto music from Boogie Down Productions, which sometime I might review that sometime this month and shit. So stay tuned on that one. So yeah, with that be, with that being said, with that being said, um, what was I about to say? 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 Oh yeah, so fast forward to the '89. This album was released. Um, didn't really. I I believe like this album kind of like came out of the blue if I'm not mistaken because I wasn't really able to find that much information on a lot of this album as opposed to like the first two albums but like from what I looked up you know him and Karis one you know they still produce the beats and shit and it's kind of interesting because of Karis one the beats on this album though was like a lot more different than what you're used to which I want to talk more about that towards the end and shit you know so this is the album cover right here. He's got just ice, he's chilling and shit like that, you know. Yeah, very dope album cover. I like this like appearance of as we like some songs contain explicit and downright do lyrics. And yep, I mean he ain't lying about that, so and what I like about these is cause it has like the fresh records, you know, catalog and shit like that, you know, artists that's coming out. Of course, right here, that's the Cool and Deadly album, which I reviewed recently. Um, then they have his single, Cold Getting Dumb, which was on his first album, Back to the Old School. You got the Metronics first album, the album from 85 right there. Um, of course, you got Tila Rock, Tila Rock right there, too. EPMD Strictly Business classic album, if you ask me. Um, yeah, I don't think um, Unfinished Business was released at this time. Honestly. So, and then it got like, you know, Fresh Records, you know, Sleeping Bad Records, you know, Attire, which I it's crazy because you know record labels don't fucking do that shit no more. Really, where it's kind of like a thank you for the fans, you know, for supporting the album and shit, but. I wish record labels still do some shit like that, but you know how that shit goes, you know. It's kind of slowly, in a way, coming back, slowly, with like certain indie artists, but you got like certain like fashion brands like Kanye, you know, charging like $120 for the white tees and shit, I'm like, come on, man, really. But with this album, um, nine songs, nine songs and shit like that, is not credited but Heavy D makes an appearance on this album. Um he does he just does some additional vocals. Um D nice, he's listed as like a co producer. Like I guess he was kinda like helping, you know, do some shit, you know. But Yeah, that's that's interesting and shit like that. Ah. Yeah, and I gotta, I gotta get my hands on the, um, I gotta get my hands on, you know, his first solo album, Call Me Be Nice, which dropped in 1990, but that goes for a stupid amount of money, in my opinion, so, yeah. Alright, with that being said, nine songs, you guys know what I'm about to do. 
um, track number one, the Desolate one. Uh, it features Karis one on the intro. Love, love, love this song. Um, a lot of things I like about this song. I, you know, Karis one, you know, he runs his mouth too. Uh, he, he, I, 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 I love Karis one, but he runs his mouth too much, but. He he really just added the intro kind of added on to the song and shit like that. The way he flipped that Earth Wind Fire sample, which you guys definitely should know that sample. You guys definitely should know that sample and shit like that. Um, he made it like more street, you know, added the scratches and shit to it, and you know, just Ice is going in on the fucking mic, you know. One thing I've noticed about this track. It's kind of a little bit more like laid back compared to what we used to be hearing from Ice, especially from the Cool and Deadly album and shit like that. So you know he was kind of more like more relaxed, but at the same time, it's still within his traditional style, traditional flow and shit. So that's the fucking the desolate one. Track number two we got is "And Justice for All," which is playing in the background. Love this track again. Love this track again. He's just going in on the fucking mic. Very strong track. Um, yeah, the beat again. One of my favorite Karis one beats and shit like that. You know, yeah, he definitely did his thing on this shit. Track number three, Hardhead. Um, it kind of reminds me of Run DMC's "You Talk Too Much" from the um King of Rock album, which was an okay album in my opinion. Where he's talking about, you know, people who who don't fucking, like, we listen and shit like that, but he fucking, they fucking love to talk too much and shit like that, run their fucking mouth. But, like, he try to tell them, you know, chill, chill, but at the same time, you know, they run their fucking mouth and then it always gets them into fucking trouble and shit. Um, dope, it's a cool track, but I've noticed that he kind of went a little off topic. With certain shit when he, during the track and shit like that, so yeah. Other than that, very cool track. Nothing bad about it. Um, track number four, Welfare Recipients. That's that was a single. Um, very dope tr track. You know, kind of something different. Something different you would see from Just Ice, where he's kind of going after people who who go who use welfare as a way. To fucking survive and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Because let's be real, like at that time, you know, in the late '80s, I want to say like in the mid to late '80s, early '90s, I want to say like welfare was really at a rapid high and shit like that, from what I've looked up and stuff. So, and a lot of people were kind of like wanting to use welfare as just a way, you know, just to make themselves rich and shit like they just use that as a fucking handout whereas the people who actually need the welfare they need that you know for groceries they need that just to live and shit like that you know what i'm saying so ice was just going after you know people who just wanted to use welfare and relied on that just to survive and shit like that which is a very unique topic because i kind of felt like the concept it fits more in vain with, you know, Boogie Down Productions, um, the ghetto music blueprint of hip hop and shit like I like that. Which I'm gonna talk more about that, like I said. But, you know, very cool. So like again, it was a very original way to talk about shit that shit, you know, so that's welfare recipients. Next track is not not touch the just. Um that's like a reggae-ish track and shit like that, which it was okay. Um, not really like a very not. It's a cool song, but you know, not as strong, not the strongest track on the album. Um, then we got "It's Time to Release," which um, again, that was another pretty cool song and shit like that. Um, yeah, he just goes in on the mic. Next track in the jungle. Whoo! Yeah, that's. Among my favorite track on the album, possibly my favorite track and shit, you know. Um, yeah, man, like that fucking beat is just sounds so sparse, you know, sounds so minimalistic, but yeah, man, very interesting beat by Karis One. He just goes, like I said, he just goes in on the mic. 
like I was gonna, you know, jot some lyrics down and shit, but from what, from like the lyrics on here and shit like that, you know, there's no lyrics on this album online and shit, so it's kind of like kind of sucks. But you know, I'm gonna talk more about that, you know, towards the end. Um, next track, Hijack. Again, another fucking sick song right there. You know, he just, you know, very he's rapping fast and shit. And the last track on his album, Ram Dance Hall Session. This is a song that features Heavy D on additional vocals. Um, rest in peace to Heavy D, by the way, hip hop legend. Yeah, this was a pretty much another, a better reggae track than the Touch the Adjust and shit like that. So, yeah, I felt like this was a very, very, very dope. Nice way to end up the album. And that's all the songs off this album and shit. Um, my personal opinion, this is a very slept on album, if you ask me. Very dope album. I love this album. And it's kind of crazy, it's kind of crazy because, you know, this album kind of grew on me, in a way. And a lot of people want to say Cool and Deadly is his best album, which, that's a good album right there, but I like this album for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons was I felt like this was probably where Karis One was entering like the, his experimental phase and shit like that because with the, some of the production, if you guys notice Karis One, he's known for like the boom, like the reggae-ish kind of production dance hall, whereas with this one, it's kind of like a more sparse. Boom Bapish kind of, I want to say track and shit, tracks and shit like that. Um, which I fucking love and shit like that. It grew, it actually grew on me in a way, but a lot of long time Just Ice fans, they don't really, they don't really fuck with this album. And that's mostly due to like the production and shit, you know. Because, you know, Just Ice, he's kind of like an acquired taste of like a lot of people and shit like that. And... Yeah, it's kind of like they were more used to the shit that he was doing with like um, Mantronics and shit, you know, with the back to the old school. And, you know, he reunited with Mantronics too with um, 1993's Gun Talk and shit like that, which I've not heard that album and shit like that, you know. So, and I just felt like, you know, Just Ice was definitely at his lyrical peak and shit like that, you know when he came to this album, so I definitely have high regards for this album. It's not an album you would hear a lot of people talk about when it comes to, like, the new school hip-hop, old school, new school hip-hop, whatever you want to call it and shit like that, but if you're definitely a boogie down head or if you're a fan of Just Ice, I will most likely hunt down and find this album because this album is actually out of print, unfortunately. The last known reissue was from Traffic Records, um, Traffic Entertainment, as I should say, from 2006. So, if you can find this album, must have in your collection. So, yeah, this is Just Eyes with Desolate One, released in 1989. And um, that's all at the time I have for y'all. Stay tuned for more. Make sure y'all subscribe to this channel and shit like that if you want some dope hip hop reviews, army reviews, live reviews, whatever you want. Because I got some dope shit coming. Peace.